Okay, thank you guys, and uh, you know, sorry for you know cutting short the lunch time. I think for me, <laughs> so, and I hope you guys had a good lunch. So uh, today I'm going to talk about oh, one of the practices that I've been doing for uh, last couple of years, uh, kind of like mixing, matching our traditional database practices with our you know the most common trend that we have is non-structured data. So hopefully it will be a short session, around 20 to 25 minutes. So uh, let's get started with it. So I'm Mizan. I'm from Bangladesh. Uh, I'm currently working as a Telnor Health as head of engineering. So mainly, I am a software architect with around 16 years of PHP experience, uh, and uh, I do some writing a little bit. And my latest book was in uh, was on PHP 7 data structure and algorithms. And since we are just had lunch, so I decided, like, why not show some picture of food? So we can relate this, right? The spaghetti. So when you are trying to eat spaghetti with spoon, what happens? You are get, having a hard time to actually place it in a spoon. So the problem is that you need a fork to actually, you know, sc sc scroll around and have the spaghetti. But again, once you are done with almost with the spaghetti, you don't want to leave the sauce in the plate. So you need a spoon to actually eat that too. So there's a common problem like which spoon should I use? Should I go for fork or should I actually go for the spoon? And we end up actually using both. The same thing actually happens with our database choice actually. So we are in a kind of like in a dilemma whether we should be going our traditional database like MySQL, PostgreSQL or should we actually go with our you know, purpose-built DBMS like MongoDB, CouchDB. So it's like kind of like choosing which one is uh, you know, best for us. And uh, at the end, what we do, we actually end up using both. For relational data, our love and you know, kind of like long relationship with the RDBMS, we can't actually leave it out. And again, with the modern trend, uh, we actually try to use the you know, uh, MongoDB or similar database for unstructured data. So in a sim uh, simple project, we actually end up using both. So that actually makes our life more difficult. Unless we had something like this, it's called Spork. So that's actually a combination of spoon and fork, which is used for spaghetti eating or other purposes maybe. So if we can actually have this in our database, that should have been great. And that's actually, what we are going to talk about, yeah, it's already there. And uh, whether we like it or not, we have to thank Jason for that. So we have this uh, whole new, not actually whole new, it's actually been there for a long time, especially used in JavaScript, but uh, standardized to actually use in everywhere at this moment. And we are actually kind of like obsessed with JSON, and we are using JSON almost everywhere. And especially with the API and JSON, they are actually kind of like synonymous right now. So if you are using API, we are always expecting that the data should be written as actually JSON. So JSON actually gives us lots of flexibility when we are actually uh, representing data in different formats. And uh, since we are actually wor working with JSON, especially with uh, uh, you know, other databases like MongoDB and CouchDB, what actually make us still use the RDBMS? So in unstructured data, the problem is that the relationship is not there. Uh, we miss the acid properties. So not, you know, lots of transactions, things are actually not that important over there. But in RDBMS, we actually make sure that the data us are highly structured. We have the acid the transactions. We have the relationship. And we are very much uh, kind of like glued to, the, uh, to our normalization process. And we end up using lots of joins, you know. And also, sometimes for performance, we do something called anti-pattern denormalization. We create flat tables and use those. So in such a way, uh, we are actually kind of like messing up our development. So why not we actually move to the new era of RDBMS with the support of JSON? So lots of the database engines are actually right now started supporting JSON. And one of my favorite databases uh, engine, you can say the PostgreSQL. So they have very good support of uh, JSON and JSONB. And uh, it's not a native JSON, so a little bit different from what we actually see in MongoDB, but it solves the purpose. And in some cases, 
is better actually. So JSON-B, is, they call it JSON better or binary JSON, whatever you name it. The, in Postgres, they actually prefer it to call it JSON, the better version. And uh, they are actually kind of like uh, tackles the indexing problem that we previously had. And this particular data type in data, uh, our database actually helps us to actually mix both our structural and JSON data at the same time. And it's pretty easy to use uh, if you are trying to implement your, you know, a JSONB structure in your current database design. Uh, just create a column for with JSONB data type. That's it. And if you look at the example of Trello, Trello has some card structure where we actually move the cards, and each card has some descriptions, some um, to-dos, and lots of things. Now. Traditionally, designing such uh, you know solution might be you know very complicated because you have to end up with lots of tables, one table for cards, one table for say tags, one table for you know to dos, and at the end of the day, you have to use join to find those data together. So we are actually creating a simple cards table to show like how it can be actually mix and match with our traditional practices and with the JSON one. So basically, you can see some queries there. So we are inserting some data, JSON data, in our JSON tab, uh, in a column. We have name, we have tags, we have finish. So this is actually another array. So we are actually using multiple values within the JSON object. And then again, number four, especially, we have tags. Uh, especially number three, we have tags and ingredients, which actually is not present in any of the other uh, JSON object that we have. So when we're actually uh, storing this, this actually helps us to actually uh, store different sets of you know, data formats in the same column. And now when you are querying data, so the big question is like, yeah, we can store it, fine. Now how to actually query the data? Is it faster? Because we know when we are uh, having the traditional database with uh, you know, structural data, we can index those data. We can get data faster, we can query, we, can, we do filtering and everything. So what about the JSON part? The good part is that yes, we can query the data. It's pretty simple and we'll see like how, uh, what are these operators actually means. So we are actually asking that within the data column in JSON, I need a key called name. And this value is actually returned as text and we are actually seeing that. And similarly, we can actually filter these results like where we want to see the curves which are actually finished. So we can query those data and we can actually uh, search, uh, filter those data as well. And also we can check, for example, we see in some of the data models we had ingredients, some didn't. So if we want to know whether the column actually exists or not, we can actually query it as well. And also, if some of the JSON object has nested JSON object, we want to get those data, we can use the built-in functions within the database to actually know those things. So this is actually pretty simple. It's already built-in features of the uh, database engine. And also, the indexing part, we can actually index whole JSON or a part of it in, within our database engine so that it can work faster. And uh, I have worked with uh, millions of rows of, you know, objects without indexing, it's still a lot faster, you know? So if you want to add indexing, that's fine. And uh, what um, PostgreSQL does is that it supports indexing through GIN, which is a generalized inverted indexing, uh, and it actually is quite faster. And there are some operators, so which actually gives you as an object or text, whatever you want. You can query using path and everything. You can use Boolean operators to see whether the you know, particular key is there or not, in, if, the, if a certain path exists or not, everything. Now, these are pretty simple and they have lots of built-in function. The question is like if I can have the support of the same, you know, unstructured data within our RDBMS, what happens to MongoDB? Like, is it really good compared to MongoDB? 
So just to give an example, that, uh, though the test is actually quite old, so that's 2014. So what they did is that with 50 million records of complex document data, they put it in both Postgres and in Mongo. So the result was that Postgres was twice as fast at regarding data ingestion, two and a half times fast at data selection, and three times fast at data insertion. And uh, while doing this, Postgres actually consumed 25% less space, considering the MongoDB one. So MongoDB actually came up with a better version of their software in the next release. So now it's almost per, but in most cases, if you go for you know, performance analysis, you'll see in some part, the JSONB operations of Postgres is much faster compared to Mongo. And that's one of the reasons, actually, when we started uh, our microservice uh, platform in Telenor Health, we actually chose uh, PostgreSQL instead of MongoDB. So what does it mean? Then, you know, we are not going to use MongoDB. So that's actually not the case, you know. So MongoDB has also some better choices. For example, if you are performing lots of dynamic queries, uh, MongoDB comes with automatic sharding features. So if you want to scale, Mongo is much better, you know, options. In case of Postgres or any traditional uh, RDBMS, the performance tuning has to be done, you know, manually or you have to use third-party solutions to actually uh, make it efficient. But in Mongo, that comes automatically. And again, like, uh, my suggestion for you, uh, you guys should be like, I am very much big fan of actually using both. So I am using Postgres uh, in case basis where I need to actually kind of like denormalize my st structure. I use JSON over there. For example, if I have a post, uh, say post table, and I have a tax table, in traditional RDBMS, I will end up with three tables. So I will have post, I have tax, and I have many to many relationship called post underscore tax. So that's the general practice that we have been doing. But if I'm actually kind of like trying to omit the whole post underscore tag and separate table, what should I do? I can create a JSON column within the post where I'm actually saving all the post related tags as an object, as a simple JSON object. That gives a little bit flexibility when you are developing and also arises a few questions like what happens to the normalization concept? What if the tags are null? So there can be so many issues, but you are the person to actually going to choose what is best for your project. So the suggestion is that if you are using static JSON data type, Postgres might be a good choice. MySQL is coming up with the JSON data structure. It's uh, almost like, you know, uh, they're catching up with Postgres in that sense. And uh, if you want to mix both unstructured and structured data, suggestion is like, yeah, you can go for Postgres or even MySQL they can be a good choice, but if you are very much, you know, like uh, heavily dependent on unstructured data, preferably post, uh, MongoDB or similar database will be good because one of the features is that in MongoDB you can actually change individual uh, key directly. Whereas in Postgres or MySQL, what will happen is that you have to copy the whole object, then change it, then store it. So the operation of change is actually more costlier in your traditional RDBMS. But if you are actually having a static JSON type data, then maybe Postgres will be much better. For dynamic one, MongoDB is much preferred. So that's it, I have a very small presentation as, as I was asked to actually keep it within, you know, 15 to 20 minutes. So I actually tried to keep it within 15 minutes, unless if you have any questions. Thank you guys.